Hello and welcome everyone back to another video. My name is Zika Today we're back in crypto video. Today we have a banger. We have a guest and it is a pleasure to do this interview. We're going to be talking about Pulse Mafia, an interview with one of the founders behind it. Ladies and gentlemen, Pulse Mafia, the world's first play and earn Mafia Game 5 protocol on Pulse Chain. So please welcome Cult. Um, you know, my first question is, of course, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about it about yourself, your experience in the crypto space, and what has led you to Pulse Chain? Um, yeah, uh, well, uh, I'm a Hexagon, part of the Cinco Club, you know, um, found Hex years ago through uh, Randy Halarski. I don't know if you know Randy. Yes, I know him. Uh, Legend. Uh, yeah, big influencer, big person in our space. Um, yeah, I remember, I think it was back in 2020, 20, late 20, early 2021, I think. Yeah. I don't even know anymore. The years are flying past with this, these cycles. But uh, yeah, I found some of Randy's videos and uh, I really liked what he was talking about. He was talking about hex and so like, what is this hex thing? Like literally, like, you stake it away and the interest you can earn in uh, in extra tokens is just huge. And uh, what is a T-share? As soon as I really understood what a T-share is, I was like, okay, this is it. This is uh, this is the the one-stop shop for me, you know, as far as crypto. And uh, and just the more I delved into it and the more I've got in touch with the community, I mean, the, the community is absolutely king for us. And uh, I, I sort of found, yeah, I found, I found Hex really when the sacrifices for Pulse and Pulse X were around. Uh, I kind of, I got another tail end of, of Pulse. It was really about Pulse X for me at the yeah. time. Um, and during that time, I, uh, I sacrificed for a few other projects. I sacrificed for Liquid Loans and, you know, some of those other ones. And uh, and at the same time, a sacrifice came up for Pulse Pot, which was like the world's first truly decentralized uh, PVP casino on chain. And yeah. I thought, okay, I really like the look of this. So I started to get involved with the community. And that's kind of how I found Jacob and team. And they're basically the same guys behind Pulse Mafia. So, you know, I've been with those guys since the beginning, really, as a, an active community member. And now I just, you know, I've kind of morphed into this PR evangelist type guy. <laughs> and, uh, and it's really good fun. We have a really great community. Yeah, I've seen uh, some of your live streams as well. I think you're doing a really great job. Uh, you know, setting up the live streams, getting the engagement. So uh, that's definitely something I would vouch for as well. Um, you know, speaking of Pulse Mafia, obviously it has come from uh, the BSC. You moved over, I'm going to assume, is it two different branches or has it been like kind of a strategic move to Pulse Chain? Uh, well, it was always going to be uh, one game across two chains. It's literally the same game. Yeah. Um, a bit, because our team and because the community are really known for building projects on the Pulse Chain, uh, it's really made sense for us to to launch on Pulse Chain as well and to launch on Binance Smart Chain. Um, with the Binance Smart Chain, we actually had a, a previous product. It was going to be called uh, Thank You Richard, uh, Thank You CZ, as in CZ from Binance, because we had a Thank You Richard Hart project that yeah. kind of formed the skeleton, the bones of of Mafia game, if you like. Um, it was a six token ecosystem. We had things like staking, faucets, NFTs, NFT marketplace, and at the time, we wanted to do a sort of a sister project to that on uh, on Binance. And over time, um, our, our head developer, Jacob, uh, he had this idea for this Mafia game. He said, OK, instead of just doing this thank you, um, Richard, or thank you, CZ, which was a tax token, but the taxes were used literally to buying and burning Richard Hart tokens out of existence. So it was great for the post community. But over time, we saw that we were burning like millions of dollars worth of tokens, like millions. Wow millions of dollars and uh and jacob had the idea so well okay look how about you know what imagine a world where we had the same sort of game mechanics but we kept all of those taxes purely to benefit the players in the game so the mafia game sort of was birthed from that and uh, and over time um over time yeah we saw we launched on the binance smart chain uh about a month after we launched on on pulse and now the two games are like through development, they're at the same levels. So they will launch at the same time. And I mean, what a beauty, beautiful thing for Pulse Chain and especially for Pulsicans and Hexicans that this game, I mean, you know yourself, you've had to look at it, right? It's pretty compelling stuff. It's pretty compelling tech. And, uh, and it's, it's got a pretty you know, compelling story for even for an onboarding opportunity. Yeah. You know, because it's the same game on two blockchains, imagine if the game really kicks off on either one. I mean, the word is going to get spread out, you know, it's going to get spread out there and it'll just be an onboarding opportunity for Pulse Chain. You know, if, if people know, because you can earn money on, on the game, 
literally the money is the same on both sides, right? So if you're playing the game on Pulse and you're really earning good money, all you have to do is play the same game on BNB and you're earning the same money, right? You know, so literally like you have a, a double chance to earn. And uh, and I think that in itself is a huge, huge opportunity for Pulse in general. Absolutely. Yeah. And you mentioned obviously the, you know, the game mechanics, the tokenomics, obviously one of the main token is the mafia token which is uh, looking at it it's basically almost a two month old token it's doing really well by the yeah. way 111,000 in the lp very good um you also there is the vault that i want you to talk more about and how does it link to the game mechanics the game loop and just a quick side note i really like how you guys uh you know, specifically said play and earn rather than play to earn because I like how you guys are focusing on play, you know, the player mechanics, the game model first and then the, yeah. the byproduct is the making of the money, right? So can you talk to me more that's about the... That's exactly it. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's exactly, yeah, I, I picked I mean, up on that. You, you hit the nail on the head, yeah. You hit the nail on the head really at that time. Uh, it, it's play and earn because really what you're doing, by playing the game, you're effectively trading your time for money because... You know, you, you play the game, you do some in-game tasks, if you like. You know, you can do things like heists. Like, you know, you can you can rob things, you can smuggle. You can literally get into an all-out family war with some of the other players. Like, you can, you know, you yeah. can kill players. And if you if you kill a player, literally, you will take whatever resource they have with them at that moment of the kill, and you just get it. It goes into your wallet. Right. Yeah, Wild West. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it's it, it, yeah. So it, it makes sense. We're, we're starting to see a lot. Of, sorry, I'll go back to your question. Yeah. Uh, we're starting to see a lot of uh, game strategy in the Telegram groups between different families and different players because it makes sense for the game. For the grand scheme of the game, it makes sense for everyone to get along. You know, let's play the game. Let's do our heist. Let's maybe set up some different businesses. You know, I'll smuggle something from this country to this country, and then I'll sell it to you. And if you can smuggle something from another country, you sell it to me, and we'll all be a happy family. <laughs> but yeah. we know this is mafia, so people are going to uh, want what other people have. People are going to defend the things that they have, and there will be a lot of killing, a lot of death involved. <laughs> 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 But uh, one of the one of the things that really stands out, which, which makes this game really important, is like you said, the vault. So there's a buy and sell tax on the token. Uh, it's a four point six percent buy tax and a sixteen point six percent sell tax. But one hundred percent of those taxes go into what we call the bank vault, yeah. and the bank vault is what the mafia families are going to be fighting for control over. So the way the vault works, every week, once the game goes live, every week the vault will pay out ten percent of its total value. Whatever is in there. So right now we're at, we're at five billion. So we we'll pay out, you know, a half. Well, yeah, five hundred million every single week, and that will go to the top five families. So right now we have seventeen families that are currently currently playing, but the top five control this vault payout. So I think the first family will get thirty percent of the payout. Then the second will get twenty five, twenty, fifteen, ten. Um, mm -hmm. That's the way it is at the moment. Uh, there are places six, seven, and eight. There's a conditional payout. So mm -hmm. if the vault payout week to week increases, yeah. but the game is obviously doing better, it can pay out more. Then places six, seven, and eight will also get five percent payout. But if the vault payout on a week to week basis goes down or decreases just for that one week, then they won't get that payout. Yeah. So really, just top five. it makes sense to be in the top five. Yeah. But I mean, worst case scenario, be in places six, seven, or eight, and hope that the game continues to do what it's doing. And uh, but right now we can see this: the first place family in on the pulse side are the syndicate, and I think their payout at the moment is about six thousand dollars a week for the you know for the family. But and that's literally with the price that pulse is now, and we know pulse is kind of down at the moment. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. And we know, and it's the same thing. So, I mean, as soon as Pulse starts to rise, it'll go fly. As soon as Mafia starts to rise, it will fly. I mean, it's, it's, we're doing great things. Like, it's a really, it's a fun opportunity. And the conversations that we're seeing between the existing players in the community, I mean, it's phenomenal. It's becoming its own little beast. Absolutely, yeah. I, I like how the game kind of reminds me of game theory, right? You have the, you mentioned like, okay, should they work together? And sometimes greed will will you know come into play and then you know they'll backstab each other that's basically like the prisoner's dilemma type of game theory <laughs> um 
tell me about because you talked a little bit about you know mafia token itself i've seen in the white paper that you guys have upcoming tokens uh, to launch such as the uh, i believe it was called you know the health bullets and the keys tokens can you tell me more about them how will they be used as well um, yeah, so at the moment, Mafia token is, is out. So that, that was really our stage one. So uh, yeah. the Mafia loans, we have 1 billion tokens. Right? Um, 800 million have gone out to the market. Uh, 100 million went into our LP. And 100 million are for uh, a team wallet for the moment. Uh, maybe for some marketing or, you know, we decide what we want to do with them in the future. Um, but that was really our token airdrop, right? So as soon as the game went live, um, those tokens went out. And what people can do... Uh, literally, you could just speculate on the token, so you could just hold and wait for the price to go up, which I mean makes sense. Um, you, I mean, you even said like the, the way we are right now, we've got pretty solid liquidity, pretty solid yeah. um, market cap at the moment, considering yeah. the way the market is, and considering that the fact that we're halfway really to launch, uh, I think we're yeah. actually doing pretty well. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. And then, so when when the game goes live, we will have uh, it's obviously in game. It's a killer be killed game, so you need bullets, right? Yeah. So it's been decided that the bullets will actually be a separate token with its own separate LP. You can buy, trade them, whatever you want to do, or you can transfer them into the game. And then when they're in game, you literally have ammunition to go and kill other people you know, <laughs> if you want. Uh, yeah. One of the things that, that is really useful with that, obviously, you need bullets to kill people. So if you want to play the game and actually really partake in the game, you will probably have to defend yourself by shooting someone. So you will need those bullets. In the game, you can get those bullets by um, by buying them off the NFT marketplace that we currently have in there. Yeah. Um, you can open some of the crates that we have. So you can use your keys to open a crate, and inside the crate, there's a number of different tools, uh, which are all in-game. Some of them might be bullets. Uh, it's the same thing with health. So obviously, health is going to be something which you would need if someone tries to attack you. right? So even though... Even though bullets are something which people might stockpile mm. because they want to make sure they have enough bullets if they're attacked. Uh, we think that health is kind of going to be more of a more of a reflectionary thing. So it's mm. like, oh, someone's trying to attack me, I better stock up on health or I better buy more health. Yeah. It's like so offense via defense. It kind of that way a little bit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, we can see right now there's, you know. Bullets and health are going to be so important because on the NFT marketplace and every territory that we have um, will have its own bullet factory and will have its own hospitals right, for, for the health side. Mm -hmm. So if you are, if you own, or if you are one of the family members or even a solo player, actually you can do it as a solo player. If you own the bullet factory, effectively what you're doing is you're owning the admin keys for the, for the smart contract, which, which mints mm -hmm. new bullets. Yeah. And but you know, a bullet has its own LP, it has its own everything. So literally, it's it's a, just a money printing machine. Mm. You can mm -hmm. choose to sell those again, trade them on the market, or maybe you can put them into the game and sell them on the NFT marketplace for other players, to other players. You know, that's so true. It's like you literally yeah. have just a money printer. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, speaking of that as a, you know, an avenue for someone to go into, you know, become like a manufacturer, etc. What are the types of players that someone can choose to be within Pulse Mafia? Uh, and what would you say the main goal slash the main factors that, you know, dictates a, a clan slash, you know, family, obviously, to be in the number one spot? Um, well, every player starts from zero. Okay, mm. So, you know, you go into the game, you pay. If you want to create a player in the game, it costs you 2000 Mafia which I think right now is about $3, maybe $3, yeah. $4. Um, once you're actually in, you have your player. So you can choose your character name. You can choose the sex of your character. And uh, and you can choose what city you want your character to be in, what location. Okay. So when you have the character, then it's up to you if you want to play like a rogue solo player or if you actually want to join a family or maybe even set up a family. Uh, right now, mm. there's a lot of families who are already well on the way. Some of them have, you know, up, upwards of 80, 90 members at the moment. Wow. And one of the benefits of joining a family, I would say, would be you pool resources. You know, so if you are a player who has a lot of resources yourself, mm. because, you know, through the NFT marketplace, by opening crates, you're starting to build up your worth. Uh, that's basically how you rank up through the game. So you have to build up your worth. Um, you can do that by the amount of stuff you hold. Or you can also do that by literally, when the game goes live, by doing in-game crimes. 
Yeah. So you need to do a crime. <laughs> it's like experience points. Street you cred. Crime, you get some experience points, and you can start to rank up. So you can start off. You know, you really start off like at the bottom, like a nobody. But then, you know, you can start to rank up and up and up and up. And I mean, obviously, I guess if you want to play that game, the ultimate goal is to become a Don, right? to become the Don of a family. Because mm. remember, it's the Dons of the families that get the payouts and they decide wow. what they want to do with them. You know, actually, it's a top three members, who we say. So you have the Don, family, the Consigliere yeah. and the Capo de Sina. Those three will actually get the payments from the vault every week. And then it's up to them what they do with it. And we can see some of the families now have decided literally, okay, if you're in this family, we will just share the vault payments with everyone. So everyone in the family, regardless nice. of the role, will get something according to, you know, what, what they're doing and what uh, what they're bringing to the table, what they're bringing to the family. And and some families are not doing that at all. Some families are a little bit smaller and they might just say, okay, well, look, there's, you know, we've only got 10 members, so we're just going to keep all these vault payments. And maybe they, in time, they might buy more bullets Buy more utilities, um, uh, you know, buy more resources for the yeah. family to keep the family safe and maybe to do a lot of these heists. But there's some funny heists. Like, I think the lowest level heist you can do is like you can rob a kindergarten or something. <laughs> Sell the you sweets know, back you can in the rob, market. You can rob like a hot dog cart. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone starts from somewhere, you know what I mean? The hustle exactly, starts. Exactly. Yeah, and you, you can work your way up to, you know, smuggling cocaine. Oh. Like, so everything is popular. <laughs> Yeah, amazing. Well, you mentioned, um, you know, regions where, you know, a player, a starting player can choose whichever region. Uh, I've seen in the in the roadmap as well, the next thing is the Mafia map. Can you tell me a little bit about it? What is the provisional dates, if you can give us uh, when it comes, etc.? Uh, well, I can't say the dates because I don't know the dates. Uh, this is really it's down to our, our founder, Jacob. Um, I can tell you there's from all the stages that we have, I think the map is the one that people are most looking forward to mm -hmm. every stage because it's really when all the families right now um, are really trying to boost up their family work to try and get those rankings. You know, they're yeah. trying to have literally they're they're recruiting like crazy. We've seen some, you know, we a lot of the families are really so organized that they've they've got their own recruitment arms, they've got their own like military arms, so you know. Wow. Uh, the hitmen when they when they go alive, the out there. <laughs> um, they've got people. You know, a lot of the families even have their own Telegram. They have their own Twitter handles. Yeah. Like they're they're really going. Wow. For it. They're trying to build out this huge lore. You know. Yeah, I love things. lore. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, and the map is is really the most important because it will show everyone. Number one, how close they all are to each other. Because even though we know there's different cities, we don't know if the map is going to actually look like a normal world map. Mm. It could be that Las Vegas is right next to, you know, next to um, Palermo in Sicily. Yeah. It could be right next to you just don't know. It. Uh, but not only that, um, we don't know how it's going to be. So we know that traveling in the game, if you want to go from one city to another, you need, a, you know, there are certain different ways you can do that. You can do it by trains, planes, um, by, you know, just by driving. Mm. Uh, and we don't know yet how technical that's going to be to yeah. make that move right we don't know if it's going to be uh one of we, we actually have a, a game dev crypto kool-aid who who is in one of the families here and i mean he's he's a real real game developer yeah uh, and wow. he talks to, he, he does a lot of streams with me um he'll, he'll be able to talk your ear off about it if you ever want to talk to him. but uh he's always talking about this uh the movements how how can you move in this game? Is it going to be literally, you know, are you you have your headquarters and you have all your different things around you as a family? Um, is it going to be this different families because obviously different families would share in some cases they're in the same city. Mm. Uh, how is that going to be broken up? How are people actually going to be able to interact with each other in the game? Yeah. Is it going to be difficult to find someone in the game? Yeah. You know, all of these type of questions we don't exactly know yet because that's all the juicy stuff that comes really along with the map. Absolutely, yeah, because you mentioned, you know, there's different possibility. I'm going to assume like, you know, the communication channels, family only channels, close proximity channels. That sounds pretty exciting, to be honest. Um, as well, another thing that I saw that you guys mentioned working in the background, if you have any information, I saw that there was mentioned the kill, kill simulator. <laughs> Can you? Yeah. yeah. What is it? Yeah, the, the kill simulator is, it, it was, that was actually something that was added to the to the launch it, it didn't it didn't um it wasn't there originally 
Mm. Uh, the reason that it sort of came up, a lot of players were getting really nervous. It's like, why should I just join this game? And immediately a big family who has a lot of power will just kill me and that's it. I mean, I'm gone, you know. Um, because remember, they can take your in-game resource, mm-hmm. uh, whatever you have on your in your pocket at the time. So Jacob, the, the dev, he he did uh, an AMA with um, Brother KG from Internet Money Wars mm. uh, a, few, a couple of months ago, I think. And, and he described the, the situation to kill. Like, if you want to kill another player in game, it's actually really quite technical. You know, there's like a, you have to fill out like, um, I don't want to say like a questionnaire, but it's not really a questionnaire, but you have to tick a, a, tick a number of different boxes. You know, it has to be absolutely correct. It mm. could measure your worth against another player's worth. It might measure yeah. where they are compared to you. Uh, it might, you know, measure their bodyguards count compared to yours. And, you know, it, it'll actually tally up all these different things. Staff, yes, staff. This, there will actually be mm. like an RNG attached to it also. Oh. So even though, huh. you know, you're going to kill someone, it's not 100% guaranteed that it's going to work. Mm. Maybe it'll backfire on you and you'll be the one that will die from the interaction, you know. So you need to be really, really careful about how you can kill someone. And I think with the kill simulator, it makes absolute sense. So people can get used to the idea of, okay, what do I need to do in order to kill somebody? If it's a big drawn out thing and it costs me a lot of money and there's still no guarantee it's going to work, is it really worth killing someone? Maybe I'll just, you know, go and do a few heists and stake my money in the bank for, you know, auto compounding interest. And, you know, that's one of the things I love about this game because it kind of, it it has a little bit of every single thing that we love about DeFi, right? You know, we Mm. love staking. We love fountains, you know, free, right? We love yeah. free stuff. Um, you know, uh, we love airdrops, automatic airdrops. We love NFTs. We love NFT marketplaces. You know, we love yield. We like to see how yeah. real yield works versus inflationary yield. And this game, it sort of has every single part of that all in one. So even, yes, we, we look at it like an onboarding tool, but I mean, even just as an educational tool for crypto in general, you know, what a great way to get a gamer who doesn't know anything about crypto you know, come over here to play the game. And by the way, you yeah. know, in after a few weeks of playing this game, you know a lot about crypto. You know how things work. Yeah. Yeah, that is very beautiful. I feel, I feel like, you know, this is such a great opportunity for you guys to be in Pulse Chain, the first mover's advantage, being the first, you know, fully fledged game on the blockchain. And as you mentioned, it will attract people who are gamers, non-crypto, into the crypto world or vice versa. Crypto who are non-gamers into it. It's really pretty uh, nice stuff honestly i really like the game as well it kind of reminds me of a you know western uh, you know kind of a wild west themed dungeon and dragons because you mentioned the, the element of rng <laughs> and the stat vs stat stuff um th- my question my next question is what are the next uh, steps in the roadmap that's coming that we could expect yeah so so we have a map we have a map coming um about about three weeks ago uh about three weeks ago, uh, we were told by the development team that the map will be out in about two or three weeks. But I spoke to um, I spoke to Jacob last week, and yeah. I asked him for an update on that. And he basically said uh, it's going to take a bit longer than planned because they keep raising the bar. They keep yeah. ma- they keep making it better and better, you know? And and I know Jacob, and I know Jacob projects. And when, you know, if he says something like that, you can believe it's he's going to knock it out of the park. Yeah. You know, it was the same thing even with the marketplace. People were looking at the marketplace and, oh, yeah, we can sell NFTs, buy and sell NFTs, like we did on the previous platform that we had. But, I mean, what it brought out is it's phenomenal. I mean, it's really, really good. It has it has a lot of fun and excitement around it, right? So, you know, so you, you open your crate and you get to choose, or it lands on one of the different categories, whether it's bullets, mm-hmm. help, cash, mafia token itself. Like, yeah. you, can, you can open one of these crates, which costs like $20, and there's a, you know, you have a chance of winning five million mafia tokens, like just in one in one crate, you know. Um, wow. And uh, you know, there's lots of different things that that you can get from the marketplace. And we can see actually the marketplace now. I mean, actually, I'll just have a quick look here myself. The marketplace now. Uh, in and now, it's been really been going for I want to say four weeks, maybe mm-hmm. five weeks at a push. Yeah. And we've already done two hundred and eleven thousand dollars worth of sales. Beautiful. Right. So even yeah. though this Mafia marketplace is only in the Mafia game, it's pretty much still the most successful NFT marketplace on post. Yeah. And in these market conditions as well, by the way. <laughs> yeah, 
crack. Wow. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, it, it's doing great things. The game is doing great things, you know. Absolutely. Well, it's just like, like I said, it's, just, it's getting bigger and better all the time. You know, that's why that's why the map is right. Really, like you talk to anyone that is in Mafia yeah. right now, and they're like, oh, "God, the map is coming soon." I cannot wait. You know. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Well, I think uh, that kind of covers all my questions that I have for Mafia Pulse Mafia. I wanted to ask you, you know, one more question. You know, what do you think of Pulse Chain? Uh, how does it feel? You know, being in Pulse Chain, etc. Jenny, what are your thoughts about Pulse Chain? Okay, I mean, like I said when we started this, like uh, you know, Hexkin, Patrocinco, all of that. Um, Beautiful. I I think uh, I say this I say this to everyone. I say this on a lot of my own streams as well, and I say it to people that just generally ask me because I, I I don't look at charts too much, especially in these market conditions. Yeah. Why well, look at charts? You know, if you have a long term vision, you don't need to worry about them. If you if you know if you're a trader, day trader, and you're looking at things going up and down, of course you need to do your TA and you need to get out there and do that. Uh, I I don't do that. I'm you know the delay gratification guy. Uh, you know, I'll continue to I'll continue to build positions in all the tokens that I love and wait until Pulse Chain starts to do its thing. Like I'm I cannot I cannot overstate how big Pulse Chain can be. We have the community. Uh, we have the money. The community has the money. Right? You know. People, just imagine what happens when all these big hex states start ending soon. You know, it's over the next 10 years, there's going to be a hell of a lot of hex going back around. You know, whether it gets sold, whether it doesn't, where they get restaked, it doesn't matter. And I think Richard Hart knows that. Uh, I think Richard Hart is, he's by this time. There's a lot of things he can't say at the moment. Absolutely. You know, maybe he has legal advice to say. Don't say a word about any of this. But we, you know, you know what Richard is like. He has a little defiant bug in him. And that's why maybe the last two weeks we've seen him, you know, explode all over Twitter. Again. Yeah. If it is even him, you know, it certainly sounds like him. It might not be him. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, Pulse Chain, I mean, we have the community. We have some really clever people over here building. Uh, really clever people. I mean, I know, I think you recently you were uh, talking to the UFO guys. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Coach uh, BTC, X. Or Coach BTC. Like, yeah. I, I know Coach and that is, it's, he's good buddies with me. And uh, those guys are doing some phenomenal work. Absolutely. Know? There's, there's a lot of smart people over here. There's a lot of really good projects over here. We're always going to have some crappy projects too, because, you know, in, the, in a young chain, everyone's going to want to try their, oh, I've got a good idea. Let me get a dev to build something for me and let's see if it works, right? You know, yeah. that might get a bit of attention overnight and then it might fizzle into nothing. But you have to expect that. If you don't expect that, where's the fun? Absolutely. You can't just be waiting for all these serious projects all the time. You know, there has to be a bit of fun out there too. And that's why mix it all up, you know. And that's why I think with something like Mafia, we're creating something with really, you're trading your time for actual money. And I can see this, and I've said this before to a lot of people. Uh, I can see people playing this game almost like a, a full-time thing, like a full-time job, eight-hour days, 10-hour days playing this because the potential to make money is, is I mean, it's real. Yeah, people can be making thousands of dollars a week from this just by trading their time. It's happening already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful stuff. Good well, time. yeah, well said, man. And I think you reminded me of a quote from Richard Hart who that tweeted recently. He said, "Volatility is the price you pay for holding the best asset." You know, obviously he was probably referring to Bitcoin, but this applies to honestly anything. You have to believe in something. And of course, it, for me, it feels great to be uh, in Pulse Chain. And I, and I also cannot wait for the old season to start and uh, etc. Yeah, it's very beautiful. Well, I think, yeah, it will come. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Colt, for being here. Obviously, everyone who's watching, I'm going to leave all the links in the description. Uh, Colt, you have a YouTube channel. You have a Twitter as well. That's Colt DeFi. K V L T D Fi, and of course you guys can check out. You know I'm gonna leave all the links. I'm gonna have QR codes, uh, PulseMafia.io, MafiaGame.getbook.io uh, as well, and then their Twitter. Uh, everyone should follow them, uh, Pulse Mafia, as well. Pulse Mafia. Io. So yeah, I think uh, really it's been a pleasure having this interview with you. We I need to have a another one honestly <laughs> down the line okay. with any updates. I'm absolutely up for that. You're more than welcome to jump on my channel too. Appreciate you. Yeah. And uh, soon enough, I'm going to appreciate it. Yeah. Soon enough, I'm going to start live streaming as well. <laughs> I haven't done my cool. first live stream yet. Live stream is really important. It's really important. That's true. I think it's really important because you can always clip your videos and add them as video content as well. 
That's true. So you're getting you're getting like a double from it, you know. You're getting the yeah. live audience and you're getting all the followers. Double the content generation. That's that's very true. Yeah. Well, guys, I'm going to end the video there. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this and uh, we'll see you another time. Bye-bye.